All right, yo guys, what's going on? It's Rage, and welcome back to some Modern Warfare Remastered. I am so excited to bring you guys this video here today. It is finally the day. The H1 mod is now live, so here for this video, I'm gonna run through a quick tutorial on how to install it. Now, real quick, before we go ahead and get started with everything here, I wanna go ahead and remind you guys to please join into the H1 Discord, as well as check out the H1 website. I'm linking both of those down in the description below. Please feel free to reference back to the H1 website as they cover the entire installation process, as well as answering some FAQs and some bug fixes. I completely understand that that this is going to be a lot of your first times here on Modern Warfare Remastered on PC, and the Steam version of the game is not very good. Like, this port on PC is not the best. Thankfully, what the H1 devs have been able to do is iron out a lot of the problems and turn Modern Warfare Remastered and basically make it what it should have been on PC. Now, throughout the course of the installation tutorial, I'm going to be walking through a lot of bugs that I personally experienced, and I want to try and answer some of the more common ones, especially for first-time setups. So, before you guys go ahead and start commenting a lot of questions, feel free to go ahead and watch the video the entire way through, I'm going to do my best to help you guys out. So the very first thing I want to go ahead and cover before we get into the whole technical aspect of everything is, of course, how to install this. First thing I want to go ahead and mention, if you are somebody that already owns Modern Warfare Remastered on Steam, go ahead and install it. If you're someone like me who already owns the game on Steam and also already owns all of the DLC on Steam, the only thing you need to do is just simply drag the H1 mod EXE right into the directory and that's it. The only thing you're going to have to do is open the launcher, select multiplayer, let it run and update and you'll be good to go. If you're someone who already owns Modern Warfare Remastered on Steam, but you don't have the DLC, here's where torrenting comes in. As always, all of the links to the torrents will be linked down in the description below as well. Now, the size of the DLC is obviously not that big. It's only a gig, so you can just extract it here to your desktop. As soon as the torrent is done downloading, you're going to go ahead and open it, and this is what it should look like. All of the map files, you're simply going to go ahead, copy and paste everything. The only thing you need to do is just copy, paste, and just simply drag it into the main directory just like that. Uh, the, the map files don't need to go in any sort of specific folder. The only thing that needs to go into a specific folder as far as the DLC goes is here where it says English or whatever language you have the game installed in, you're going to go ahead and open it and do the exact same thing. You're going to go ahead and copy this. And then right here in your MWR Steam files, you're going to go ahead and click English and just paste it right in here, just like that. Again, because I already have all the DLC installed, I don't need to replace the files. And then you should be good to go. All the DLC is installed, you got all the files, H1 mod is already in there, run it and you're good to go. Now again, assuming most of you guys don't have MWR are on Steam, you are going to need to torrent the entire game. So what you're going to do once again, go ahead and click this little plus icon, click H1 full files, go ahead and open it. Do not untick anything right here. The only thing you're going to need to do is set the file path. Go ahead and click this little browse icon. Fun fact with H1, I'm actually running the torrented version of the game. And what I decided to go ahead and do was go ahead and just put it with the rest of my Steam files. Steam files here on my SSD. So you're going to go ahead and go to program files x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, and I made a folder called MWR H1. I find this to be the easiest way to keep it all organized, so just go ahead and click MWR H1 or whatever folder you created and hit select folder. So now the only thing you need to do is hit OK and let it torrent. Now one thing that I do want to go ahead and mention that I didn't know as far as my Black Ops tutorial when when your torrent finishes and it says seeding, the only thing that seeding is doing is just helping other people download the torrent. That's it. Here on the status bar, it's going to say like progress 100% status seeding. Again, the only thing you're doing when it's seeding is you're just helping people download it as far as I know. As soon as it's at 100%, you're all good to go. So what you can do is just right click on it and then right here it says resume, but it's gonna say pause for you if it's seeding. You can go ahead and pause it if you want to and then all of the files are still going to be there. However though, it is worth noting that if you do decide to go ahead and delete the torrent files out of Qubit Torrent, do not tick that box because that will uninstall the entire game. Do not tick that box. Just go ahead and just delete it out without that box. So once the torrent is all finished, this is what your directory is going to look like. Now, this is how it was for me in the testing phase. It might be different for you guys. As of right now, I don't know if there's going to be an H1 mod EXE already in there. I don't know if the launcher is going to be in there. Again, because my files come from the testing phase, what I had to do was load up the single player, which is the SP64. Once you go ahead and launch the single player or the multiplayer, it's going to go ahead and automatically download the updates. It's going to give you a prompt saying, uh, an update is available. Do you want to go ahead and install it? Obviously hit yes. And it should have a little prompt saying downloading H1 mod EXE. That is the launcher, which will then be put into your directory. It should stay automatically updated. Once the H1 mod launcher has been downloaded, that's what you'll go ahead and use to uh, obviously launch the game. So now by this point in time, if everything downloaded properly and you haven't ran into any technical problems yet, your directory should look somewhat like this. However, though, when it comes to first time launches, this is probably where you're going to go ahead and run into the error where it says uh, this game cannot be running without Steam or an out of memory error. 
the way that you go ahead and fix this is by downloading the players two folder again i do have links to this down in the description below but basically your players two folder is your config the whole out of memory error or this game cannot run without steam it's basically not loading your config as far as i know so if you do happen to run into this problem go ahead and just download the players two folder and just drop it into your directory just like this it also is worth noting please make sure that your graphics card drivers are up to date including shadow play or whatever the amd equivalent is now the reason why i say that is because it leads into the next problem that a lot of you guys might have if you guys are on rtx cards if you guys are on nvidia rtx cards do not enable your shader cache your game will crash i don't know what the amd equivalent is but if you have a, a higher grade card like that do not enable your shader cache i really don't know what the problem is with modern warfare and mastered and rtx cards and why you can't populate your shader cache just don't do it it doesn't work properly your game's gonna crash so when you see that come up on the first time launch just go ahead and click cancel and just don't do it so the way to go ahead and turn it off is go to your options grab graphics, video, cache shaders, just turn that off, just disable it. It's definitely worth mentioning that Modern Warfare Mastered isn't the most demanding game, especially for the graphics cards that a lot of us may have nowadays. See, back in 2016 when this game came out, I was running this game on an AMD Radeon R7 370, which had 2 gigs of VRAM on the graphics card. I'm sure most of us have much better graphics cards nowadays. If you have a graphics card like a 1060 or something like that, you should still be perfectly fine to run MWR. Now, another weird niche issue that you might run into is not being able to set your screen refresh rate properly. I mean, I can set mine to 144 hertz, but if, for example, it doesn't scroll any further past that, you can't get past 59.94 or 60, what you can try doing is uh, editing that in your config. I'll go ahead and throw up a little screenshot for you guys on what to edit. I really don't know what causes the issue, but I have ran into this problem a few times here on Modern Warfare I Mastered, as well as even a game like Infinite Warfare. It just wouldn't let me scroll to get the right refresh rate. If you do run into this problem, what you could try doing is setting the game to Windows in full screen that might work but I'm not 100% sure about that if you run into that kind of problem you can also try changing your monitor to if you have a second monitor try switching into the second one apply try switching back to your main monitor again that might work I just don't know the fix right off the top of my head for that so if any one of you guys know it go ahead and leave that down in the comment section below now one of the next things I want to go ahead and talk about here as far as uh, technicalities go is anti-aliasing this is something that Bepis one of the devs brought up to me now this is only going to apply to you if you are once again on an RTX card it's just a very small thing worth mentioning that uh, anti-aliasing in this game doesn't work as intended. As far as anti-aliasing goes here in the graphics settings, advanced video, I think I have it set to the highest setting, Filmix Ma T2X. But even on the highest setting, if you guys look very closely, it still looks kind of jagged on some surfaces. I have it typed down here in notes. If you're on an RTX card, you can use DLDSR instead of anti-aliasing in this game. Again, just if you're on RTX cards, wanted to go ahead and mention that real quick. If you guys are curious of my graphics settings, I'll go ahead and run through it. Uh, very quickly again have things like sync every frame off that's v-sync keep that off keep the monitor aspect ratio on auto native render resolution for me is on textures are on extra everything is on high i do have a 3080 and i want to make the game look good especially here on youtube because this is a beautiful game after all i'm using 3.8 gigs out of 10 again feel free to go ahead and mess with whatever graphic settings you want to to make the game perform however you want also if you guys are curious about the way that i have my hud set up you guys will probably notice it's a little bit more centered this is the uh default safe zone on con if you guys want that, I'll go ahead and uh, show it to you guys real quick. If you guys want this style of HUD where it's a little bit more centered, you have to set all of these, the whole safe area underscore adjusted and just safe area underscore horizontal and vertical, set it to 0.9. On other Call of Duties like Modern Warfare 2, you would typically set it to 0.85, but here was 0.9 when the uh, title cards come up, like right under the radar, where it says like this person is on a five kill streak. It cuts into the kill feed if you go any lower than 0.9. It's not exactly a necessity at all. It's just something that I do because I play on default FOV, which I'm gonna talk about FOV here now. Now, if you guys didn't see my recent video where I was uh, initially showing off H1 in the gun game mod, I was talking about the way that FOV works in this game. Do not bother at all. With with CG underscore FOV. Just don't touch it at all. The only reason why I say that is this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put the FOV scale back to normal. This is default 65 FOV. Again, the reason why you don't wanna bother with it is because FOV, the FOV slider, again, only pushes the world model back. I personally don't like the look of it, but what you can do is uh, once again, go ahead and just uh, open it. Open the console and type slash CG underscore FOV scale 1.2. And what you can do is kind of like mix and match to make it feel however you want. But again, I personally just wouldn't really bother with it. 
ahead, slide the FOV back down, and, uh, I mean, it looks like 80 FOV as is. Now, another big part of the reason as to why I wouldn't really worry about it so much, unless you're super nitpicky and you know what you're doing, hey, all the power in the world to you. But again, uh, back here onto FOV scale 1, default FOV. Here's what it looks like when you're ADS, and then when you start increasing your FOV and your FOV scale, uh, the sight it just gets further and further away, and it's even worse on snipers, so I would just avoid doing that at all costs, but that's just me. It's something that I wanted to go ahead and bring up, just because I know a lot of people like playing on higher FOVs, and that's perfectly fine. Although, if you're making multi-cod montages, please just play on 65 FOV. I totally understand that people like playing on higher FOV, it's just when you start increasing the FOV, FOV scale, things like the scope here tend to get a lot smaller. If I were to do something ridiculous like FOV scale 2, right? I mean, like, hey, look, it looks awesome, right? But then when you go to scope in, look how small the scope is. I don't know how to fix that. I'm sure there is a way to fix it. I just don't know. Again, like I've said a million times, Modern Warfare Remastered is not a very good PC port. It, it was just not made properly at all. And also, again, if you missed my recent uh, MWR H1 video, what you can do is turn depth of field off, and you can get rid of the blurry effect on uh, the dual render scope if that's something that you want to do. I'll personally keep it on just because that's just how MWR was. I don't mind it. And now one of the last things I wanted to mention is for all of you console players, I've gotten a lot of questions about this in my comments. Yes, this game does have native controller support. I don't know how strong the aim assist is. I don't know if there's any sort of like specific scope sensitivities that you can set like on the newer games. There's no sort of like uh, other aim assist setting. I don't play with a controller. I, I don't know that. I'm sorry, but I really don't know all the new fancy technicalities because when I played on controller, it was a simple as set your sensitivity from one to 10 and is aim assist on or off, that's it. I know it's gotten a lot more uh, in depth over the last couple of Call of Duty games that have come out, but here on MWR, I do know that a controller controller support is native, you shouldn't have to worry about using something like DS4 or whatever the program is that you have to set up with controllers on other games like Modern Warfare 2. I also don't know how strong the aim assist is or what other settings there are for that because again, I don't play with the controller. I don't know. So yeah, again though, to go ahead and hopefully rid all of your worries, it really should just be as simple as plugging your controller into your PC and it should work just like that. I don't know if there's a major difference between like a default Xbox One, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series S, I don't, I don't even know what the controllers are called anymore. I don't know if there's a difference between your default controller or something like a scuff. That might be something you're going to have to figure out for somebody else. Again, I'm sorry about that. Now, with all that being said, though, that should go ahead and uh, pretty much wrap it up. I feel like I covered everything that I wanted to as far as the uh, technicalities go. Again, I cannot stress this enough. If you guys have more questions, please ask in the Discord if I can't give you a clear answer here in the comments section. Of course, I want to do my absolute best to help as many people as I can out because this is my favorite Call of Duty of all time, COD 4, MWR. I love these games to death. I want as many people playing it on PC as possible because this game deserved so much better and so much more. The fact that we finally have a client is literally my dream come true. Of course, I want so many people playing this. I really hope you guys enjoy this. I'm going to do my absolute best to help as many of you guys out as I possibly can. But again, if there's something that I don't know the answer to or if you're just completely unsure of, feel free to ask in the Discord. So again, with all that being said, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this tutorial video. I feel like I've talked your guys' ears off enough. Hopefully, if everything is working smoothly, please enjoy the client. I really hope you guys do. If you guys have any further questions, I'm going to do my best to uh, answer them down in the comment section. By the time that the client goes live, should be Friday, I'll more than likely be live over on Twitch if you guys want to stop by. I am going to be playing the living shit out of this client for as long as it's populated. I want to keep this client as populated as possible. So if you've missed Modern Warfare Master, hey, here is a golden opportunity to play it even better. So again, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this tutorial video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope this was helpful. If you guys are interested, feel free to go ahead and join into my Discord that's linked down in the description description below so you guys never miss pings when I post new videos here to YouTube as well as when I go live on Twitch. I'm so excited for this client. Really hope you guys enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. If it was helpful, subscribe if you're new. It's been Rage and I will talk to you guys later. Take care everybody.